Welcome to another episode of the Grit Daily Podcast. Today's guest is Justin Day. He's the founder of Day by Day Digital, which is a marketing agency that has integrated AI into every facet of the way that it operates. However, what's most important and interesting about the way Justin runs his marketing agency is that he's data-driven first. And that, I think, is going to give you the clues to either choose to work with Justin or how to inform you about the partners that you're interviewing, potential partners you're interviewing, to be your agency partner, or even who you're going to bring in-house to help you run those things. I think that's the most important lesson you can take away from this conversation, outside of understanding the fascinating ways that Justin sees marketing play into the way you run your business, and also where it's going to go, and what that looks like, and what strategies are good to do, and which strategies are totally nonsense. If you're a startup founder, and you're worried about whether or not you're making the right decisions in the marketing aspect of things, this is the conversation you've been waiting for. Justin, man, thank you so much for meeting with me to be able to sort of go on this journey together on a recorded line. They call it the hotline, right? right. Uh, (laughs) It's good to have you on. I'm actually extremely curious about the nature of your work because I myself have a background in marketing. And I am watching what's happening with AI, and it really is an mm-hmm. interesting intersection. And this happens to be your sauce. What made you decide, I want to go the agency model route? Because that, that is a specific decision one has to make with your skill set. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I started out as a freelancer and just kind of developing my skills from there. And then I just kind of made a decision that I wanted to grow a business that was a long-term asset versus just, you know, with freelancing, at least for me and my experience was that it wasn't sustainable or like if I if I was trying to get a big corporate client and it was just myself as a freelancer and then I needed all these other subcontractors, you know, just being a freelancer wasn't good enough to grab these 50 or $100,000 deals. So, you know, going into a business, having the model agents or the, the agency model allowed me to get better better and bigger clients and really scale a lot faster. So it was definitely a business decision and just kind of, you know, along with all the taxes and all that kind of fun stuff. So it just helped me grow into, I looked at the long-term vision of what I wanted to do because freelancing for me at first was just kind of, let me figure out if I want to do this or like move into something else or go work for a company. And then I started to get a lot of word of mouth from clients. You know, people started picking up and I wasn't even marketing myself and it continued to grow. I was like, okay, I've got something here. I can't let this go. And so I turned it into a business and it just went boom. Okay, this is perfect, what you just said, uh, specifically because as a marketing professional who runs an agency that's integrated a full AI system, you still said word of mouth marketing was pivotal Mm -hmm. to the journey. At what point should a company be considering moving beyond word of mouth marketing? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that this is definitely a powerful thing to start out with, whether you're a restaurant or, you know, you're a small boutique or something like that, starting out with friends and family, growing from there, incentivizing people to spread the word of your, you know, you always got to go above and beyond and have an excellent service to really deliver word of mouth. But when that, you know, when you start to look at, okay, I'm not generating enough new leads or new business month over month to scale, that's when I, I mean, you really should start looking into marketing. And and honestly, I I think after about 90 to, uh, you know, half a year, 90 days to half a year or something like that, word of mouth starts to fizzle depending on your business. Um, But it's really, it's always a good time to get ahead of marketing depending on what your goals are too. Because if you're trying to do like local SEO, ranking at the top page of Google or Facebook ads, all these kinds of things takes time. You know, I think everything... Everything at a minimum of marketing, it, it, from my perspective, is it takes 90 days to test things, dial it in and everything like that. So if you're on the cusp of word of mouth is working, it's not working, and or you're thinking about moving into actually you know, looking at marketing, you just understand that you're 90 days really out from having things dialed in. Because a lot of people have that thing. It's like, oh, I'm going to turn this on and it's going to be magic. No, you got to get all the data. <laughs> That's what marketing is all about. It's really all about that data, right? So, you know, get... Get ahead of it and understand that you're 90 days out and just start collecting data and understanding your customers and go from there. Yeah, man. It's it's one of those things. It sounds like if you started yesterday, you'd be 89 days away from really not having to worry about marketing as a thing you'll eventually have to do. Yeah, so exactly. what would be the most ideal time as soon as you have a as soon as you've decided on a budget for it? And it doesn't have to be that crazy to begin with, right? What would you say in your professional opinion 
starting today in this mm. landscape would be a good place to start in terms of what you should be setting aside for actual marketing? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, we just opened up our small business offering, um, leveraging our AI tools and marketing know-how and all that kind of stuff. And and just across the board, um, I'd say anywhere from two to 3,000 is a good starting point per month. And again, because of 90 days, generally most most agencies or freelancers are going to require three months up front, or not, not up front, but like committing to three months, just because we want to show and deliver the ROI, but we know that it can't happen in the first month. So I'd say anywhere between two to $3,000 and just like management and um, just like building uh, systems and everything for that. And then uh, if you're trying to generate leads, get local awareness for something like that, whether that's Google ads or Facebook ads, I would budget in a, you know, a, different, a separate ad budget on top of that for at least $750 to $1,000 a month in addition. And that's that's the lowest that I would go. Anything below that, you're not going to have, you're not, it's not enough ad spend to generate enough data so that you can scale appropriately. So in reality, anywhere from two to $4,000 or sorry, three to $4,000 in total um, for your marketing budget to start out with. That, that can seem like a lot for a lot of people, especially if you're starting out, but it's a, it's a whole lot worse when you're half a year in and you've got no customers in the door and you're wondering why did, or, you know, why does anybody know about me? Well, where's your marketing? So you know, it's, it's definitely an investment, but it's worthwhile if you can find somebody that you can trust and they can do what they say. Right. Oh, that brings me to another point. I was looking over some of your stuff online before we got into a conversation here. And I love that you said, unlike other agencies, you know, with day by day, digital, you, you're working to, to get hitting the road with campaigns as soon as possible, even yep. though you're telling people, look, we're going to have a 90 day commitment. It sounds like you're trying to take action as soon as possible. Is this accurate? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So the first phase, the first really two weeks is all about, um, you know, testing as far as getting your Facebook ads out there, Google ads out there, testing to see what resonates with your audience, what offers work well, um, as far as, you know, getting up and going as fast as possible. We're good. Our onboarding team works within the first few days to get all of your logins, all that kind of stuff. If we're, if we're rebuilding your website, we can generally get that done in less than a month. That's a lot faster than a lot of agencies out there. And um, yeah, I mean, we hit the ground running as soon as possible. And our whole mission is really to go above and beyond for every client, no matter how big or small. So a lot of agencies, especially, I think this is kind of an older model, but a lot of people in agencies will nickel and dime you, charge you for every hour that's overboard or whatever. That's just not our model, right? We, we're, whatever you pay us, like within reason, we're going to go above and beyond to deliver whatever the ROI that you're asking for. And we're always here to surprise and delight as well. So, you know, you ask us for a website that has a few pages and maybe you couldn't afford that blog with for local SEO. So maybe we're going to go build you that blog, put up eight blog posts that are super SEO optimized and help you, you know, start showing you what that ROI could look like so that we could prove the model and then have you start to believe in the process and everything like that. So it's all about really helping people. And I think that's the most important thing. When you help people and you're kind of making that your most important thing and that's at the forefront, that really goes a long way. Is there anything that surprised you along your journey so far that you weren't expecting to be part of what you would call your entrepreneur story? Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's surprises all along the way. I, I think I never would have expected to have my business be as big as it, it is now. It's just continuing to boom. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we actually wrote our, I actually wrote my first book and put it up on Amazon and in the first 24 hours, it was a number one bestseller. That was crazy. And that got featured in USA Today, Dallas Morning News, all these kinds of other outlets and everything. So that was awesome. And just, you know, the, the biggest things that I've kind of taken away um, as an entrepreneur is to, again, just actually do what you're saying to help people because there's a lot of people that take your money and run or whatever, not actually deliver on the results. And I find that when I can connect with, you know, the right client and the right people, that the the deliverables are always going to be exactly what they're looking for and more. So I've just really learned to, you know, actually connect with people versus just, you know, there's a client professional relationship, but the connection there too, building that trust and understanding is huge. So you know, anybody starting out from a freelancer or a new business, I think that's very important is just to, you know, go go above and beyond however you can to connect with your client. That's big, man. I, you're 100% right in the fact that especially in the marketing space, there are a lot of starts 
then it stop suddenly and mm-hmm. the work was wasted because the minute you go to another marketing agency, they're not going to want to use the data yeah. from there and you got to start mm-hmm. the whole 90 day process and what have you all over again. So for any startup founders who may be listening right now with the amount of experience you have and you yourself being a business owner running an agency, what would be your takeaway for them or leave behind if you were to, if they were to be on the fence about, you know, oh, should I go with this agency or that agency? What is the decision they need to make, regardless of whether they choose day by day or someone else? Because you know, proximity, some of them like it sure. closer. What would you say is something they need to be looking out for to help them make a decision? And this is the partner you want with you. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, I think people, a lot of times, people don't trust their gut as much as they should. I think that that's a great. Thing, especially within marketing and just connecting with people because that is what this is about essentially as the marketer we're going to connect with you your brand your company to then be the face and voice of it so we really got to have a good connection and if you can trust me and we can build that trust and you and that and your gut is telling you that up front then that should be a good indication that this is a good partnership and that's really what it's about right is the partnership long term we're not you know as marketers we're not trying to just make that money and go we're looking for a long term partnership so i'd say definitely listen to your gut and also listen to the people that if you're going to hire somebody listen to the people that you're hiring right it's, there's always that battle of the client knows best and there's definitely some aspects that that's true but there's also another aspect where if you hire somebody and you kind of continue to do the roadblocks or whatever that may be that can get in your way so you know just understand when you've got that gut feeling and you're hiring somebody build that trust over those first 90 days and then just let them, if they're doing their job, let them go crazy and you'll, and you'll get that ROI back. I'm loving this. And, and I want to follow this up. Often, like you said, with the relationship between an agency and a client, the client will eventually start to come at you possibly with a, we know best, just do what we're asking, which yeah. is odd if they're going to hire expertise, but <laughs> you know, it's a strange play, but that's what's made. How does, what should the listener who is a startup founder uh, tap into in terms of being able to determine what work is the agency supposed to do and what work is the agency not responsible for that the startup founder uh, and the team needs to understand they need to bring and give to the agency for, so the agency can do their best work. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that the most important thing is to define boundaries and, and roles and responsibility up front and sign a expectations document and, and a kind of a contract to understand that you know, there's your clients' feedback is always welcome. They know the b- brand best. They know the company best. So we want to understand and digest that. Um, but you also have to set the boundaries and understand that once those are crossed, you're going to hold us back to a degree. So it's really understanding how to define those boundaries. You know, agreeing as partners because you're entering into a partnership, right? So it's agreeing as partners where that boundary and that line is, and then understanding how we're moving forward and understanding that we're working together towards a common goal and um, just reminding people that we're here to help and you've hired us for a job. So, um, you know, there's always going to be a little pushback and in, in, in kind of conflict, especially with new businesses um, and people that haven't necessarily worked with marketers before. But that's all about, you know, this from a business owner and a marketer, that's, that's kind of a part of the process and just learning how to talk to people, understand their needs. And there's always the balance too. There's, there's never necessarily a point where it's, it's only my way or the highway, right? So finding out what that equilibrium is, that medium is, so that you can continue to move forward as well as hit all the KPIs that you set from the beginning. Love it. Now, Funding is a big part of startups and and businesses in general. Did you mm-hmm. bootstrap your agency or did because it's one of those things where you possibly could start it on a whim there and then bring people on as revenue comes in. But uh, what was your strategy and journey like to to start that off and hit the ground running? Yeah, so when I I I first started my career at an agency and then that agency kind of shut down and I was put in at a point where I was like well, maybe I'll just do this freelance side stuff until I find another job. And then I didn't stop doing the freelance stuff. And so I, yeah, I bootstrapped the whole thing and I just grinded it out. You know, I, I the first few, I, I, I definitely, you know, when, when you see like Mark Cuban or people on Shark Tank thinking like saying that you're not going to be making money for the first two, three years, you can be eating pasta and peanut butter sandwiches. It's not, it's not a joke. I mean, 
and you really have to, right? You have to put that money back in the business that you make. But no, I, I, it was the first few years I really struggled. I went in about $50,000 worth of debt and I just kept believing in myself. It's like, I know I can do this. I know I can do this. I know I can do this. And I just put my head down and grinded and I started aligning myself with the right people, with the right environment, and then just continue to believe in myself and work hard. And eventually, you know, that did pay off, but I definitely, you know, I definitely want to just drive it in that when you're starting a business, you got to put more money back into it that you're taking out. So definitely if you're, if you're not having funding come in or you're not raising funding, and if you're doing it yourself, bootstrapping, just be prepared for a wild ride because this could be a few years before you're eating good. And, but when you do eat good, you eat really good. Yeah, man. I, I know this story all too well, actually. We'll have to chat after this uh, yeah. podcast, but it's it's one of those things where that's as real as it gets. And I think anyone listening, if they're seasoned, they already know this to be true and are probably Absolutely. laughing about it as they're driving, listening to this in the car, what have you. <laughs> yeah. In terms of the future, is this something that you, because, you know, setting up a business, sometimes people do it to make an exit. Do you have plans to exit or is this something you're going to do till you drop? Uh, that's a great question. And I've really been working with my business advisors on that. And I think that there's an exit in the future. So right now I'm focused on building systems out because really to make an exit, um, you're especially as an agency, you, you can have the billables and everything, but it, you know, if, if you were to step away at that, if I were to step away right now and, the, and just hand off to a business, could they take it on themselves without me being there? Probably not. But that's why, you know, I'm looking towards long term towards the exit. So now we're building out systems to be able to get there. So I think in about four or five years, we'll make an exit, especially, you know, with our swarm system that we're developing now with AI and, and leveraging all of these models and everything, we're able to generate a lot more um, assets that are equitable and can, you know, really take our business to the next level to sell. Um, and then, yeah, I think this this is kind of a stepping stone. So whatever door that opens up next, maybe, you know, I, I want to get on more stages and speak, want to help other marketers and potentially become a coach, maybe have a mastermind here and there, get in some real estate. So kind of bigger plays. Um, but, you know, right now I'm looking to just help as many small businesses and corporate companies as I can. And now when it comes to the, because you did mention this, you know, you talk about the swarm system and and the things that you're working on. What does the future of marketing, in your opinion, of course, the future of marketing look like with AI and automation constantly churning and turning out new tools right now, the way it's all looking? Like, what is your professional opinion on what people can expect to be happening? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's it's funny when you know, uh, when Facebook and everything first came out, you could do, you could post and get some engagement or when Instagram first came out, you could post a picture, a video, get a bunch of likes, views, all that kind of stuff. And Maybe somebody, you know, a business thought that there was ROI there, or you could get some leads from that potentially. But now there's so much out there at every angle. It's like if you're not doing as a marketer or as a small business or just business in general, if you're not doing the full picture and swarming your audience from all angles, then it's really hard to start to stay tip uh, top of mind, tip of tongue, because just one channel isn't enough anymore. You've got to be in front of everybody. You've got to be in front of your audience at all times. So, you know, our focus is always being, you know, having email marketing that's personalized, social media posts that are personalized, Facebook ads, Google ads, ongoing SEO, blog posts, um, really every single angle that you can for marketing. And, and, also, and also understanding that each channel is different. So speaking to that channel and that audience in a different way, not just having a video and then going to posting it on every single channel. You know, you can do that, but maybe change up the copy and the caption or something like that because every every channel is different. So, um, you know, I think it's important to really look at the whole aspect going forward just because um, there's no reason not to with AI, right? You can leverage ChatGPT to generate these captions or, or whatever else and ideas and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but, you know, doing the full picture is what it takes. And it also taking to the next level of personalization and just, you know, providing value to the end user instead of just posting, right? I think that's the biggest thing and takeaways, actually understanding what your target audience wants and needs, and then providing value to them in an organic way, not something that's forced, just something that's like a conversation like this. So that's, that's definitely what we're focused on in the future. And that's what our swarm system is all about. 
Right on. And I'd, I'd ask you more about that, but I want to leave the the listener to, to go and look that up and be more involved Absolutely. in that because I think that's important. What I will ask you for is some wisdom as we begin to close things out. And that is, you know, we hear, we get inundated with how many different things we have to do and with marketing, when we're running our startup or our business, uh, even as freelancers, there's a whole arm of marketing and we're sitting there and we're like, oh man, yes, number one, we can delegate all that to an agency and the agency will tell us what they can and can't do. But if you right. had to just tell someone who was like, let's say they're, they're a friend, you you went out to lunch and they're telling their gripes about whatever's going on in their, in, in, in their business and you're sitting there going, yeah, well, you know, I try to tell you this, this and that. Yeah. What would you say? Look, if you just remember one thing, about what it is I recommend for marketing, it's this. What would that be? I, this is going to be a two-part answer here. One, organic social media posting, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all that kind of stuff is a shiny object. It is not going to drive uh, and, and convert any users. Maybe it'll spread awareness and engagement, but it's it's not going to do the thing that it used to or you know, people think it does. I would say if you're starting out, you can do maybe one thing. I would I recommend highly Facebook ads. That's what's going to get you the customer data. That's going to get you in front of your customers the fastest and allow you to understand what resonates with them. And then you can build outward because once you have that dialed in it, with Facebook ads, a lot of people think that that's dead from iOS 14 and all this kind of stuff. It's not. It's, I can tell you it's still working great. We scale our clients all the time with it. Um, that's the best, lowest hanging fruit that I would recommend um, and and don't get stuck with the shiny object syndrome and and thinking that the videos and everything like that are going to hit because it's just not how it works. And really, you know, last part here, as far as the content goes, if you're going to do the shiny object, understand that you don't need the camera set up. You don't need the big mic. You don't need it, it's actually funny. The more high quality uh, content you do, the less engagement you get. Go raw, get on your phone, do a bunch of stuff, just walking down the street. Don't worry about the quality. Just put stuff out there that relates to your audience and it'll do the rest. I love it, man. Because there, there is that rumor floating around. You often hear people saying like they kind of get some preliminary conversations going with agencies and they're like 50 bucks a day on ads. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they never do it. Right. They go <laughs> off right. and they, they keep like, I'm just going to do organic. You know, my content's different from everyone else's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like, I don't know how to tell you this. It's, it's not, you, you know, so I really appreciate that you went out on a limb and really shared that because based on what we were talking about, that's what you would tell your friends. You'd say, look, absolutely. if you're being serious about this, you're going to need to get some customer data and you're going to need to spend to be able to understand what it is your customers are doing. And Bingo. I love that you even brought that iOS change and the cookies and all that for tracking mm -hmm. doesn't change anything because user behavior will respond to what they're attracted to. Absolutely. Right? So I'm, I'm a big fan of that that golden nugget there. So I want to roll out the red carpet for you. What's your call to action for people who are listening? Where should they connect with you? What do you want them to know about what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So we, if you're a small business or even a corporate company, we're here to help you from anything in marketing from A to Z. Again, we go above and beyond for every client, no matter how big or small. You want to give me a follow it on any platform. It's Justin Day Digital and um, reach out on my website at daybydaydigital.com. And we'd love to talk about uh, swarming your audience from all angles giving you the marketing that you deserve. Right on. Hey, man, you know you're a marketer with a pitch like that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Justin, man, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for your time, man. Great speaking with you.